In Leicester, Council Property Manager Steve is starting his shift assessing a flat in one of the Council's blocks. OK, we've got this one-bedroom flat today. We've been given the key by environmental health. Um, apparently the previous tenant's been deceased, um, so we're not sure what to expect inside, so we'll have a look. Environmental health get involved in dealing with properties only when their condition is a serious risk to public safety. This doesn't bode well. There's quite a bad smell in there. Um, looking around, there's some dog mess, well, all over the place. It's really bad smell. <clears throat> it um, hits the back of your throat just as you, as you try and take a breath in here. It's not nice at all. Obviously, the suits environmental health have been in, they've been wearing suits, so it might be a good idea for us to do that. Steve has only taken a few steps. He's already forced to retreat to don his suit. This is definitely the worst smell I've ever smelled in a void proper tent. Um, it's obviously been in there for a long time, festering. So now, prepared for the worst, Steve can venture back in. In Leicester, Steve is starting his assessment of the one-bedroom flat. In the bedroom, it's pretty clear why environmental health had no option but to go in first. Stepping through into the bedroom, the floor is completely covered in dog mess. It's actually made the carpet about an inch thicker than it really is through the amount of it that's in there. It gets worse around here, there's big chunks of it. Everything just looks like it's covered in it. How someone's been alive in this property with this, go, this kind of stuff around is it's beyond me. It's quite sad, really, to know that somebody was living in a property like this and how it got like this. Gingerly picking his way, Steve moves on to the living room and yet more reminders of the tenant's dogs. What you can see down here is obviously it's flat, so it was obviously sloppy and it's just seeped in to the carpet. At some stage, yeah, it was fresh and he was living here with, with dog mess around him and he didn't think, oh, I'll clear that up and get out of the way. It's just been left and been ground into the carpet. It's like the dogs have been having a go at the sofa there, you can see where the claws have been scratching at it. The kitchen confirms what Steve's up against to make this flat habitable again. It seems that, for whatever reason, the deceased tenant was increasingly unable to cope with everyday life. Obviously, this is a food, food preparation area. I don't think with all this fat and dirty pots and mixed in with the flies that have been on the dog mess, I don't think we can leave any of this in. From our point of view, all the units will have to go, uh, all the worktops, the floor. Um, just looking at the sink, the water that's in there is a good few months old. There's mouldy food everywhere mixed in. So nothing's going to be able to be salvaged in there. Everything's going to have to be um, removed and we'll put a new kitchen in. But there are some signs of normality. The dead man could take pride in at least one area of his life. Some trophies up there. Looks like he was a bit of a fisherman. And they're all winners' medals, so he's quite good at fishing by the looks of it. I can't see any that don't say winners. It looks like at one stage he had all his senses about him, but unfortunately he ended up living like this. Whatever its condition, Steve has to clear this flat as soon as possible. And as luck would have it, there are others who can take up the baton. I wouldn't like to be the person who's got to clear all this stuff out. They are, of course, our extreme cleaners, Dave, Graham and Lee. They're hugely experienced in this type of job, but as Steve hands over the keys, they still have no idea what they're about to confront. In Leicester, extreme cleaners, Dave and Graham, along with Lee, are braving the one-bed flat. The old tenant had an unhealthy obsession with dogs. Taking them for walks was not on the agenda. Oh, my God. Oh, dog feces everywhere. It smells just... It's your... Makes your eyes water. I can't believe that. It's like concrete. Should have stayed at home. My dog's going to enjoy my boots when I get home. He'll be <laughs> sniffing yeah. all around me, wondering where I've been. The smell may be awful, but at least Dave has a plan. I'm just going to get all the big stuff out of the way first, all the big furniture, settees, wardrobe, bed and everything like that, and then we're just going to concentrate on our removal of all the rubbish, basically. Bag it all up and chuck it in the back of the van. As the boys make a start clearing the rubbish, local residents are hit by the smell. And even with his years of experience of this type of property, Graham is already gasping for air. 
That is a horrible smell. It's just, um, I, I can't describe it. It's something I ain't smelt before, but I don't think I'll ever forget it again. If the smell left by the dogs wasn't bad enough, Dave is tempted to break a golden rule. <laughs> don't open fridges when you come in these properties. It's nine times out of ten, they're nasty. It's just all got mould in it. It stinks. Dave has survived, but Graham's not sure he can hang on. Don't you feel me puking up? Wow, that's bad, that is. I've got a right lung full of that. Oh, no. Don't think I'll be eating much today, either. As they start to disturb the contents of the flat, Graham can't be sure the day will pick up. In Leicester, Dave, Graham and Lee are well underway removing all the furniture and bigger items from the flat. But then, there's the sofa. What we got, sir? We got the baby. Inside the flat, they've taken every precaution, but outside, mm, sod's law. Oh, no, I did stand in summit there, didn't I? For Graham, it's cracking up time. Can't get things out the doorways. Dog <laughs> all over my boots. <laughs> Sweating, puking, and just getting better. Removing the sofa has revealed the true colour of the carpet. Well, you've got about a quarter of an inch of just filth between where the sofa was and... Uh, where the, the living area is, you know. I just can't get my head around now. It's not how people live like this, it's how people let people live like this. I mean, I obviously didn't know the guy personally, but I suppose it would have been a different matter if I did know him, not. I probably wouldn't have even wanted to be here, you know. But life goes on, doesn't it? You know, once this flat's all cleaned up and everything, the next people will be moving in and it'll all be forgot. They can't put it off any longer. The fridge and the freezers will have to be dealt with. The contents must be removed so the units can be sent for recycling. Putting them outside may make things easier. Nice bit of lamb there, fresh. That for a pork pie lot. A bit of mustard on that, would be all right, wouldn't it? It's all raw meat in here. What's happened is, is the freezer ain't been on, so it's all been defrosted. Just got to have a breather from the smell. It's, it's horrible. Drink was the root of the problem for the man who died here. Being a keen fisherman may have been his only consolation. For Graham, himself an angler, the trophy's point to a happier, better world. It's sad. I don't really feel like I want to bend these. To me, it's pretty emotional to say the truth. I mean, I love my fishing and that, and that. You know, some of these trophies are nice. He's obviously enjoyed himself, and he's got winners on them and things like that, so he's good at his game. I don't know, I'd like to see these go to somewhere rather than just go down the tip, really. You know, if you like, knew what club, what fishing club he uh, fished for or whatever, I'd rather get that like, taken to them. Graham chances upon some of the local residents who knew the tenant. I feel a bit better about that now because, yeah, I'm, basically I found a home for them, right, so one of the pubs where he used to drink and that, so I take them down, I'm pretty happy about that now. For Graham, the day has certainly ended a lot better than it started. After clearing the flat of all the furniture, freezers and rubbish, the boys can call it quits. They'll return over the next few days to sort out the kitchen and embark on the deep clean. After filming, it took the boys nearly a week to clear out the dead man's flat. But against all the odds, it's been transformed. Steve can now have it totally refurbished and back on the rental market in no time. <laughs>